porterhouse steak on the bone, creating that wonderful crust and dropping a huge piece of really flavorful butter. I'm going for my trusty cast iron skillet on a nice low heat, nice and easy in the background while I get my butter together. I'm gonna start by taking that butter I took out to soften and just popping that right into the bowl. Break it up a little bit with a whisk. Okay. Add that nice mixture of green peppercorns, lemon juice, lemon zest, Worcestershire sauce, yum. And my shallots. So this has all the flavor punch that we need, but it needs that little bit of freshness. And I always go straight for the classic parsley, that wonderful grassy taste with steak. Just tear the bottoms off. Give the parsley a nice chop. I always say I want to measure herbs, but let's face it, put in what you're feeling. Another run across. Scoop that up and put it right in there. Now that I've got the parsley in there, I just want to gingerly fold that in. Now, I like to make a nice log. And the thing about this is you can cut a slice off, keep this butter in the freezer, and then use more of it at a later date. So start with a little layer of plastic wrap, but don't tear it off. Put it nice and flat. Gather that butter up and put it down in a nice heap, leaving some room on the edges. You see how I didn't go quite to the end here? I fold this over. And then like when you tuck the sheets into your bed, tuck that plastic right underneath. And now I'm gently rolling and squeezing, kind of like when you wrap up a piece of candy. Break off the plastic once you've gone twice around the butter. Pick it up, give it a pull, and another twist. Look at that. Now the butter's pretty soft, so you don't want to spend too long trying to make it perfect. I'm gonna pop it in the fridge to let it get nice and cold. Here is my two and a half inch thick, maybe even closer to three, steak that weighs about two and a half pounds. And you can see I'm just seasoning that first side very carefully with cracked pepper. And it's very important to season both sides. Here I like to use coarse sea salt to get that extra bit of flavor in there, that extra bit of personality. Okay, so the porterhouse. Divide it in the middle by a bone that's gonna really conduct heat and create more even cooking internally. I've got the filet side, the tenderloin, lean and mean, and then the strip steak side, which has more of that intramuscular fat or marbling. So it's really the best of both worlds. So here comes that wonderful moment, that leap of faith where we take our steak and just drop it right in the pan. Wow. I like my steak between rare and medium rare, which means I'm looking for an internal temperature of about 130 to 35 degrees when I'm finished. And for a steak this size, that's gonna take about 30 to 35 minutes of cooking. So while you're cooking the steak, you're gonna kinda hear it calling your name every once in a while. Go over and check it out, because I think it's time for our first flip. So I've had a little renaissance, because what I used to do was just put the meat down and not touch it or look at it until it developed a great crust, flip it over, do the same thing on the other side, and then just let it go. Now I like to develop that crust a little quicker and flip the meat back and forth, which is just moving the blood or moisture from side to side, kind of like shaking a snow globe, so that all that moisture is going in and around and internally basting the steak as it cooks. Let's have a look at our steak. You can see the meat is starting to kind of come off the bone a little bit. It's been cooking for about 33 minutes. So I'll take it off and just put it right in the middle of this platter. Let's not forget about our butter. Just cut a nice big slice and look at that inside. Does that say flavor or what? And just put it right on top there in the middle. Now for the moment we've all been waiting for. So cut myself a few slices of the strip side a few slices of the filet. Go ahead and just spread a little bit of that butter all over. I'll start with the filet. Wow. This tastes somewhere between a steak my dad cooked when I was a kid and the most perfect moment I've ever had in a steakhouse. When I managed to bring restaurant and home together in one bite, that's pretty exciting to me. And then for the strip steak side, Mm. The steak has an amazing flavor. 
The two sides really different. The filet a little more tender, the strip steak with a little bit more flavor and a little more chew to it. But the best part is when you get a little bit of that butter and all those flavors mixing with the natural flavors of the beef to die for.